right, hello class. This is the Car Sunday School class in person at the Jackson United Methodist Church. And so glad to see everybody here and, and have our group together. And um, our lesson today, I'm just going to jump right into it, comes from the um, Adult Bible Studies. The Holy is the name of the series for spring 2021. And the name of our lesson for this month is living, excuse me, this Sunday, is living as holy people. And you know what? I look at it, this group, and I think, well, I need to show y'all on the camera. This is a group of people, in my opinion, are holy. Now, the lesson is basic. Uh, Janie, don't you shake your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lesson uh, is basically about what God says is holy, what that means to be a holy person, because I do have a feeling most of us would say, you don't really know me. <laughs> I have my moments that I'm not so holy, but living as holy people, <clears throat> and it's written by a um, person from the North Georgia Conference named Clara Welch. She's written for us before, and she's a deaconess. And I've always liked her lessons in the past. This um, lesson comes from the book of Leviticus. And the book of Levi Leviticus, as we know, is, I think it's, well, I'm saying as we know, so then I forget. I think it's the third book in the Old Testament. But if I'm wrong, holler it out. And, uh, but it was, they, think that the first five books, which are known as the Torah in the Jewish church, were written by Moses. At least that's what the historical thoughts are. And so uh, Leviticus is, a lot of that is what God said to Moses when Moses went up on the mountain and talked to him. And these, again, it's very familiar to us what I'm going to read. Um, and one of the things that struck me, and so I looked up, how long ago do they think Leviticus was written? And what I found was um, they think that it was written sometime between 3,400 B.C. and 3,500 B.C. is when Moses, I guess, was alive and writing or whatever that, I don't know how all that worked. But... Uh, what I found was that the present form of Leviticus reached its uh, form in about 358 to 332 BC, which I don't, I guess it, I don't know what that means, but that's what I read, so it must be meaningful. The, uh, <laughs> these words are familiar. We're going to go back and talk about it. But as you listen to it, you're going to, you know, this is what is meant to be holy. So it's Leviticus 19, 1 through 18. The Lord said to Moses, say to the whole community of the Israelites, you must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must respect your mother and father and you must keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make gods of cast metal for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you sacrifice a communal sacrifice of well-being to the Lord, offer it so that it will be accepted on your account. It must be eaten on the day of your sacrifice or the following day. Whatever is left over on the third day must be burned with fire. If any of it is eaten on the third day, it is foul. It will not be accepted. Anyone who eats it will be liable to punishment because they defile what is holy to the Lord. That person will be cut off from their people. When you harvest your land's produce, you must not harvest all the way to the edge of your field. And don't cover up every remaining bit of your harvest. Also, also do not pick your vineyard clean or gather up all the grapes that have fallen there. Leave those items for the poor and the immigrant. I am the Lord your God. You must not steal, nor deceive, nor lie to each other. You must not swear falsely by my name, desecrating your God's name 
in so doing, I am the Lord. You must not oppress your neighbors or rob them. Do not withhold a hired laborer's pay overnight. You must not insult a deaf person or put some obstacle in front of a blind person. That would cause them to trip. Instead, fear your God. I am the Lord. You must not act unjustly in a legal case. Do not show favoritism to the poor or deference to the great. You must judge your fellow Israelites fairly. Do not go around slandering your people. Do not stand by while your neighbor's blood is shed. I am the Lord. You must not follow your fellow Israelites. Excuse me. You must not hate your fellow Israelites in your heart. Rebuke your fellow Israelites strongly so you don't become responsible for his sin. You must not take re revenge nor hold a grudge against any of your people. Instead, you must love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So basically, we know what this becomes is the Ten Commandments, basically. When I was reading this, and looking back out at it, one of the things I thought of was 4,000 years before Christ, now over 2,000 years since Christ, and what has changed? Have these rules changed? Is any of this a shock to me, to you, that we're supposed to, you know, like try to look, be nice to your neighbor? Don't trip up a blind person. <laughs> Don't you wonder about that one? You know, don't make fun of a deaf person. Like, really? Is this news to us? And don't we know that for some people it is news? They might say that, well, my mama told me that. Well, how did she come up with that idea? You know, can, I mean, that, to me, I found that interesting to think about all of these centuries that what is right and wrong basically has not changed. And do we still believe it? Do we as individuals believe in those things? Are they important to you in your life, into what you decide to do? One of the parts I thought was interesting was the, because uh, they spend several minutes about telling folks not to eat rotten food. That's basically what he's saying. He's saying, it, you know, because the, they believe in sacrifice, but you cook them, whatever it is you're sacrificing, and you eat it right then. Because by the third day, is no good and you're going to be sick, and your friends are going to want you to be away from them. Now, how many of you look in your refrigerator, and you have some chicken salad sitting in there, and you wonder, how, how many days has this been in here? <laughs> Is it three days? Four days? Isn't that funny? God was giving some good advice. He said, don't Amen. eat rotten food. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and don't believe I haven't done it. Not necessarily. I'm, I have been at Sylvan Grove two times with food poisoning in my life. That is not fun. Anyway, so much for that. But those are God's words, <laughs> as well as your mama. Don't eat that. It's old. Then why didn't you throw it away? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I like the, um, like I said, the, you know, don't trip up blind people or insult a deaf person. I wrote next to that, just treat people right. What does it mean to be holy? Treat people right. Now, another interesting one was when he gets into telling them how to treat the, your, the fellow Israelites fairly. You must judge your fellow Israelites fairly. He said, don't give favoritism to the poor or deference to the great. Right is wrong, right and wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter if you're rich or if you're poor. But sometimes we judge on things different than right is right and wrong is wrong. We say, well, he didn't really mean it. 
And then the interesting part is when it gets down there and says, um, you must not hate your fellow Israelite in your heart. And then he says, rebuke your fellow Israelite strongly so you don't become responsible for his sin. In other words, you don't just put up with anything and everything, but you don't judge so harshly with people. I mean, you, sometimes there's a reason that person may have been reacting in the way they did. So God is pretty sensible. And... Um, who isn't sensible is a lot of times the people that hear it, <laughs> that listen. And just because we've read all this doesn't mean we always live by every rule. And then over and over he says, I am the Lord. And then um, the author goes on and says, we are holy because we are people of God. In this lesson, we will come to understand what it means to live as God's holy people. Well, then down at another part of the lesson, and I made this note, wrote this down. Interesting, are you holy just because you are good? I know there are lots of good people in this world. I don't know the answer to that. Are you holy just because you are good. What does God say over and over? I am the Lord. In other words, he is telling Moses, and then Moses takes it down to the Israelites, that being holy is acknowledging I am the Lord. And that's something I think we struggle with sometimes because I know people that I know are very good. But they, as far as I know, they never went to church or came up in the church. So maybe that's where we don't have to be too judgmental over people that can work into there. So interesting. He said, God gives us another reason to treat other people with respect. And that reason is love. How much do we hear that, to love your neighbor as yourself? And how hard can that be? It's, sometimes it's hard to love yourself as yourself. But love your neighbor as yourself. What motivates you to treat others with respect? You know, what is it about other people that sometimes makes you not even like them when you just see their picture somewhere. You know, we have to talk to ourselves about stuff like that. One of our offerings, he talks about sacrifices and offerings to God. He said one of our offerings to God is our love and fair treatment of other people. Sometimes that's what God wants from us. Not sometimes, all the time. Love and fair treatment to other people. I underlined this sentence. It has been said that rules are written in response to people's previous behaviors. Have you ever been hiking in the mountains and seen a sign on a cliff that warns, no jumping? <laughs> we marvel that someone would actually try it, but obviously somebody did since the sign. But it made me think about going to the Grand Canyon. I've talked about that a bunch of times, and any of you that have ever been there, you know that lots of parts of the rim of the Grand Canyon, there is not a fence. There is nothing but straight down. And you see these people. Now, not me. I want you to know that's the edge, and this is me. Right back here, I'm looking down there. I ain't going there because I'm a coward. But there are other people that will get right to the edge, and then they'll turn around with their selfie, you know, and fall back and hit the ground below. So maybe they needed to have that sign up there. Don't do that, you stupid. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But what, isn't that interesting? I was thinking about cars going so fast on the interstate. Uh, you know, in some European co countries, there's not a, um, like in Germany, I think it's the Autobahn. There's not a uh, 
speed limit in, in a lot of that. And some of you have been on that, hadn't you, Bird? Hadn't you? <laughs> Maybe not. Some people like to go as fast as they can. And if it wasn't for that speed, and the speed limits sign actually doesn't stop some of them sometimes, does it? We were going to Atlanta the other day. I don't know, I guess it was somewhere. And anyway, these two cars came up flying up behind us. And you know, you're just hoping they can get around you and keep me. Went on, and then not too long after that, the, the blue lights are coming behind, chasing them, you know. And we figured those people in front were going a whole lot faster than the <laughs> police car was going. So we didn't know what happened. But for some people, having a sign doesn't really, you know, slow them down. But anyway, we have laws because they're needed to help us be holy. That's not why anybody that writes the law would tell you that. But I think that's what God's telling us. He says, when we treat others with kindness and respect, we are following God's instructions. We are also making a sacrifice or an offering to God. And in what way can you make your offering to God, to your friends, your neighbors, your um, strangers? How can your actions in your life show that you listen to God and understand that God is holy. So, this one sentence, I'm, or two sentences I'm going to read. We may hesitate to believe that we are holy. Holiness is a gift from God. We are made in God's divine image and set apart as beloved children. So, the lesson um, was interesting to me to think of the fact that this has not changed even to this day from thousands of years of what it means to be a holy person and basically a good person. So uh, while I was reading part of the lesson talks about St. Augustine and he wrote a prayer. It's called the Prayer to the Holy Spirit. And I had looked it up, and um, I thought I'm going to end the class with that. St. Augustine's Prayer to the Holy Spirit. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I love, but what is holy strengthen me. O Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. O Holy Spirit, be with us, help us, give us the strength we need to be and act holy and maybe somebody else will see that in us and be able to say that about us we ask this in jesus name amen all right see y'all next sunday